Broadcasting live from homes all across the country, it's Adam Blotner's Live from Lockdown Variety Hour, featuring performances from Valerie Curry, Matt Gehring, Josh Daniel and Gray Henson, Clint Randall and Zach Glantz, and now he's just like the IRS, he's got a lot more stimulus. Give it up for your host, Adam Blotner. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Live from Lockdown Variety Hour. All right, enough applause, enough. Uh, oh, I'm Adam Blotner. I'm your host because uh, it's my show. All right, thank you for tuning in. Uh, let us know in the comments. Where are you guys? Where are you tuning in from? Say hello in the comments. Uh, if you're on my uh, Facebook page, not my profile. If you're on my page, I can load your comments up here. Or if you're on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, let me know. I can put your comments up. I hope everybody's having a great evening. Uh, I'm having a great time. I have some tequila. I'm restocked. Clint had asked me last time, where's your whiskey? Well, my good friends, Sammy and Jenny, uh, of course, uh, as many of you know, my wife, Jenny, is pregnant. Baby's coming any day now. We're very excited. And uh, my friend Sammy and Jenny said, we want to send you something. We want to, what do you need? What do you need? And I said, we don't need anything. We have everything. Maybe just tequila. Anyway, they sent us a really sweet package today, which included El Padrino tequila. This stuff is delicious. Very, very good. I highly recommend it. Again, it's not brought to you by El Padrino. But if you represent El Padrino, let's make a deal. All right. Uh, we're going to start things off. We have a lot of... Fun, exciting, big time guests on the show today. Really exciting stuff. Um, one of our guests, uh, I've had the joy of collaborating with him a few times. His name is Josh Daniel. I'll give a big intro for him later. Um, but I thought it would be fun to dig up from the archives a video of a collaboration that I got to do with Josh Daniel. So uh, a couple years ago, I put out an album called Step to the Left, Country for Liberals. And uh, it's available on Spotify and iTunes and uh, Amazon, you know, wherever you listen to streaming music. It's all over the place. And we did a concert at 54 Below February of last year. We did a big release concert. And I invited Josh to sing a song that I had written for the album called Country Gay. And he knocked it out of the park. He did a fantastic job. So here's a little treat. It's Josh Daniel at 54 Below singing Country Gay. Enjoy. Yeah. 
Josh Daniel, ladies and gentlemen, from Step to the Left, Country for Liberals. Wow, that was awesome. That, that to me, is the definitive performance of that song. I'm, like, ashamed that there's one on Spotify. I'm like, no, everybody watch that one. That's, that's how it's done. It's awesome. And we also have some, uh, I, I want to point out, some other important collaborators. Zach Glantz, who's going to be on this show later, contributed lyrics to that song so fantastic job zach and uh, you might have spotted some also some some other friends in there uh, we have matt tobin on banjo uh who commented shoot the banjo player uh sounds like a suicide note um we have uh brian del toro on electric guitar who says he misses that jacket i've got it right here in the closet brian when this quarantine is over it's yours buddy well you can't keep it but you can wear it at the show Okay. Uh, we also had uh, Chris Brodicker on the bass, and we had Craig McMahon on the keys, killing it, and we had Yuval Leon on the drums, my good friend Yuval. Amazing. All right. Um, now, I want to tell you, my friends who are watching, if you're watching on my Facebook profile watch party, if you migrate over to my Facebook page, I can put your comments on the screen, just like I can do here on YouTube. Uh, Matt Tillman had suggested that the El Padrino, great gift for a pregnant lady. Very astute. Uh, but we have Alyssa Goldman who's watching from El Paso. Alyssa, this came from your fellow El Pasoans, Sammy and Jenny. I'm sure, I hope, Alyssa, what are you drinking tonight? I hope it's El Padrino. Um, okay, all right. What do we got? Let's bring in a guest. What do you say? <laughs> Yeah, we're going to bring in our first guest. This is exciting. Our first guest. Our first guest. This is a very talented dude. He's been on Netflix on the uh, show Set It Up and the characters. Amazon. He's in The Tick and Panic. And we need to talk about The Tick in a second. And Comedy Central in the series called At the Office Microwave. And a longtime performer at the currently deceased... Upright Citizens Brigade Theater in New York. You can follow him on Twitter at Mr. Gehring. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Matt Gehring. Wow. Hi. Hey, Matt. Oh, hello. Oh, wait. I'm going to oh. see. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Okay. Hi. Hi. Okay, Adam, I think you got Shoot the Banjo Player wrong because it's a country song. So someone was probably like, Shoot the Banjo Player. That's like, right. That's right. You know, probably, I, you know? I that's that probably would be the case, except he was saying it about himself. Yeah, no, he was complimenting. Oh, he was as a compliment. Shoot, was, shoot. I, I'm the banjo player. You you know, you're gonna have to be my country translator, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, no you really you really understand country you jargon. Know, from Ohio, yeah, yeah. Upper country for sure. Okay. Good. All right. Um, well, we have a question of the week. Awesome. And our hold on, let me put up my question of the week banner. Oh, great. Our question of the week for our guests is, Matt, if you, you are, of course, a fantastic comic actor and comedian, Thank you, sketch Matt. and improv, if you weren't pursuing this line of work, what do you think you'd be doing? What's another career you, you might have ended up doing in your life? What would I do if I was not an improv comedian, which pays notoriously very well? Right. You're um, in it for the money. We know. Yeah. It's so hard to think about. Um, when I, you know, when I was in school... I actually, uh, um, oh, this is a this is a real job that existed, and I I think I was pretty good at it. I was a baby stroller demonstrator. Wow! 
So I worked specifically for a company called McLaren and I showed, I went, they paid me to go to <laughs> like Babies R Us in Union Square, like all these different kids stores. And I would stand there with a McLaren stroller and just show people how they opened and closed. Um, and that was my, and then, then they hired me to then get my friends to do it. Like it was a, uh, it was a pyramid scheme for sure, but, <laughs> but it was, but it was, they actually paid money for us to do it, but it was insane. So I probably would be, um, uh, you know, and if you need advice on baby strollers, Adam, I can definitely tell you what's up. Okay. But I feel like you're just going to end up trying to sell me a, a McLaren. But here's the thing. McLaren is the best. So I don't know why you wouldn't want it. You know what okay, I mean? This is. Okay, so they got the Stark model, which I think is actually the best. Actually, that's like 10 years ago, so what do I know? Um, Matt, are you currently working for McLaren? <laughs> God, I wish. That would be nice to have a job, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. All right, so you would be a stroller pusher. Stroller, a baby stroller uh, demonstrator. Demonstrator. Pusher, pusher demonstrator. Is, implies the person who owns it, I would think. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's right. For sure, for sure. And because they didn't give you a portion of the company, you were out. Yeah, yeah, because I didn't. Uh, own part of that company that started in like the 1920s. I am, yeah. I'm upset and I left. Actually, they didn't, they, they didn't figure out how to put me on payroll. So I actually went on strike. I was a one man strike. I was like, I'm not going to work until I get paid. And this like poor woman in payroll was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it's probably lovely people to work for. Oh, it was great. They're all British. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, what, what do you have prepared for us, man? Um, I'm just going to do a couple of characters for you, if that sounds good. Um, yes. Um, actually, Adam, oh, oh, you're still there. Okay. okay. I'm here. I'm, I'm here. Start my, my first thing. So this one is a little, um, this one is, uh, this one is, um, this one is like a high energy one. And I need, I need your help. So here we go. Uh, feel free to I'll play along at home. So here we go. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Let's get it started. When I say, hey, you say, ho. Hey. Ho. Hey. Ho. When I say oh, you say yeah. Oh? Yeah. Oh? Yeah. When I say mister, you finish the opening paragraph of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four Privet Drive were proud to say they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious because they just didn't hold with such nonsense. That's right. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley. Okay, that's it. That's all that bit is. Okay. All yeah. right. That that was high energy, Matt. Wow. That wow. was, you know, thank, thank that was high energy. You. Okay. Thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Um, okay, hi, hi everybody. Um, thank you, Adam, so much. You're amazing. Thank you for uh, letting me be here with these talented people. Um, so my name is Matt Gehring, and um, if you're saying to yourself, "Whoa, oh no, is he one of those guys who are the Harry Potter series like seven times as an adult?" The answer is, you know it, and I am not proud of it. Okay, so have you ever seen Shark Tank? You know Shark Tank? Okay, because guess what? We're doing a Shark Tank bit. This is a bit that I like to call. <clears throat> Colonial Shark Tank. Hello, sharks. Yes, I'm George Washington, and I'm here to pitch you the revolutionary new idea, America. Now, what is America, you might ask yourself? And I know you're saying to yourself, well, <laughs> wait a minute, you're trying to pitch me on America? Where are we? Isn't this England? And I'm saying, it doesn't have to be. If we rebrand these colonies as America, we'll get rid of everything we hate. Kings, taxation without representation. And what do we get in return? Freedom, autonomy, slavery. I, uh, that uh, wasn't supposed to, freedom and autonomy. So <laughs> yes, with your help, it could truly be an American revolution. And any questions from the sharks? Yes, you. You have a question about the slavery. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, of course, that wasn't supposed to be in the presentation. Uh, but uh, Sure, yes, uh, I can talk about it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we uh, have slavery uh, right now. Um, and I personally have a few... Uh, I, I like to think of them as friends, but they are slaves. And um, uh, we, I, I actually have a proposal, I've thought of this, have a proposal that we um, can get rid of slavery in as short as 100 years. Um, but, but even shorter, I think we could get rid of it in five 
decades. You know, did we talk about taxes on tea? Can we talk about taxes on tea, please? Um, that's my George Washington bit. Thank you. My wife just gave me a haircut, and I gotta say, it's really fun. Um, you know, oh, sorry, sorry, talking about like George Washington. I feel like conservative media right now um, is like, is Trump the next George Washington? And I'm like, kind of. He'd have slaves if he could. And like hydroxychloroquine is kind of like bloodletting. Like there's a lot of parallels there. Fake teeth, wooden teeth, we'll figure it out. Um, okay, okay, this is, uh, this, <laughs> uh, my usual question is like, who here listens to podcasts? And um, it's always so dumb because it's, it's such a small amount of people. And I feel like the joke is like, everyone has a podcast, but uh, I feel like that's not, we shouldn't be making fun of the people who make podcasts. We should be make fun, making fun of the people who like, listen to podcasts and that is a hundred percent me i'm that guy who's like what was that a conversation about the parallels between black panther and black Klansmen by two non-professionals oh i'm in that is the next three hours of my life thank you so much um my, uh, my favorite podcasts for sure are um are uh are the storytelling podcasts um like the moth so this is uh this is my impression of every person at the moth <clears throat> so I'm 14 and I'm at the beach and I'm screaming my head off because my brother is holding a crab up to my face. And two things you need to know about me. One, I'm terrified of crabs. And two, I always want to be a chef. Cut to I'm 21. I'm in New York City and I'm attending the Culinary Institute. I'm living the dream. Or so I thought. And on the day we're learning how to make crab legs, I'm not there. And no, it's not because I'm afraid of crabs. I totally am. Um, it's because I'm at the doctor getting diagnosed. At the time, I'd never heard of acute spinal definia, but I soon learned that I had it. For those um, who don't know, spinal definia is a rare genetic condition that um, makes you walk sideways <laughs> like a crab. Go figure. Um, but cut to today. I'm a chef <laughs> here in New York City, and my favorite thing to make, crab cakes. Yeah, that's that character. Thank you. Wow. I need Adam's applause. Um, uh, yes. And believe it or not, yes, I, I have been to the moth before. Um, and I'm someone who listens to a fair amount of, can you believe it, NPR. Um, <laughs> so this is uh, yet another impression for you. And this is what I'm going to leave you with. Um, but this is my impression of uh, America's Sweetheart, yours and mine. Um, <laughs> Ira Glass. In conjunction with WHYY, WNYC, WBEZ Chicago, This American Life. Today on the program, scarves. How many scarves does it take before you're more scarf than man? But first, sponsors. We are sponsored by Squarespace, Build a Beautiful, Stamps.com. It's just stamps. Casper mattresses, spooky mattresses. Nature Box, loose granola sent to your door. Wix websites exclusively by and for candles. 23andMe, ever want to know what group of colonizers you come from? 23andMe, white guilt now has a product. And of course, audible.com. Audible, read books with your ears. Order any of these now and get 25% off with offer code VOCALFRY. That's it. That's me. Can you believe it, Adam? Yeah, for having me. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. That was just epic. I have the joy of being able to see all the other performers in their little windows, and everybody is just ear to ear, just in hysterics. Oh so my God, funny, I'm so man. excited to see everyone. This is such a great night you've put together. Ah. Uh, what a joy to have you on. Just so funny. So spot on. We have, uh, we're going to go into the comments. We'll see Matt at the end. All of our yeah, guests I'll, wave I'll, goodbye. I'll Thanks. Thanks. Let's Adam. give a big round of applause to Matt. Hey, Matt Gehring. And you can follow him on Twitter. Mr. Gehring, what a talented dude. 
Um, I want to check in a few things going on in the comments here. Um, we have Humox is just losing it. Humox 2012 is just losing it. Uh, love this. They say spot on Ira. Lola says, I agree. That was spot on. Um, some, some big applause from uh, Matthew Tobin and uh, some great stuff in there. Uh, Matthew Tobin also points out British. Don't they call them prams? They do. They do. Yeah. But if they, somebody in America tried to sell an American person a pram, I, I don't know. They, they might just run. Uh, I also had a, a question here. Someone said, "Is was was Brian the female vocalist in Country Gay? No, Brian Del Toro was the guitar player. The female vocalist was my wife, Jenny Pinzari. She was fantastic. Getting a lot of compliments there. Um, on the, uh, yeah, all right. We got some good stuff. I also want to clear something up that's going on among the cast chat here. Okay, Matt. Matt, I see you hanging a, a, a poster. Can I bring you on? Okay, hold on. Bring on Val. Val. <laughs> Matt. Good. You have to unmute yourself. I was Matt. My wife's poster that she didn't want up. <laughs> oh. Matt, are you the lamp? I am not. I, just thought, I got excited. I'm sorry. Oh my God. I am Matt, what I, do you what do you do on the tick? I am I'm the assistant to the superhero. <laughs> and also, oh, funnily you're enough. So funny too. I mean, everyone's so funny on that show, but I, oh yeah, the tick is they're all amazing. It was so fun to do. Um, I'm the assistant to the super to, to superior. Um, and funnily enough, on Set It Up, which I got cast on the exact same time, I play an assistant. So, and at the time in my life, I was a personal assistant for my day job. So some sort of cosmic thing happening. <laughs> Definitely. And now you're going to play an, an unemployed person. Yeah. I'm like in a really quarantined cool. at home. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh my God. Your next, your next role. Yeah, well, I have to point out because uh, Val, Val is also, uh, Val stars on the tick and, and we will. Uh, oh my God. Val. I had long blonde hair and we were we did not get to work together. Yeah. I worked oh my God. I was confused. I was excited, but you were also. Oh very my god! But you were great. <laughs> I don't think that I've ever had two people who are on a show on the same thing. Anyway, this is exciting. I think there's a whole synchronicity theme going on with you. Obviously, you're right. Mm -hmm, you're mm -hmm. right. For sure. For sure. <laughs> All right, you guys. Okay. That's my contribution. <laughs> That's your contribution. All right, we'll we'll bring them back. Well, wait, what were you saying, Matt? I, I said remember. that was Val's actual performance. It was just asking. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. Uh, okay, thank you. Bye. Okay, bye. All right. Um, great. Let's check. We had, to, we had to settle that out. We had to figure it out. Had to be figured out. I'm checking in the comments here. Um, okay. Headers PBJ feels left out. I guess because I'm not saying their comments. They said they have to go now. All right. Well, I hope they didn't uh, go yet. I'm, I'm showing their comments here guys okay we're gonna bring on our next guests this is very exciting um i know these guys we went to college together we've known each other forever they're incredibly talented dudes uh clint randall is best known for attending college with adam blotner the host of adam blotner's live from lockdown variety hour where he spent countless hours doing musical theater and a very finite number of hours completing some sort of degree he allowed his love of singing and dancing to languish for many years, daydreaming in his cubicle about performing, but unsure of where, when, or how to get started. His initially modest idea to host an occasional evening of Broadway-themed pub trivia quickly took on a life of its own and became Boozy Broadway, a recurring cabaret series that combines performances and interactive quiz games hosted by a rotating cast, including Adam Blotner, the host of Adam Blotner's Live from Lockdown Variety Hour, Clint's husband, Dr. Zach Glantz, started out as an enthusiastic supporter and collaborator, but was unable to resist the siren call of the stage and became a full-time cast member in 2018. In June, Boozy Broadway will celebrate its second birthday and produce its 14th show. I'm excited to bring on these guys. You can follow Boozy Broadway on Instagram. I go down, I'm a part of, Jenny and I are put a part of Boozy Broadway. Uh, for the past two years, we've been driving down to Philly to be a part of this, and now it's gone virtual. I hope you'll join us in following Boozy Broadway and seeing these live shows. Ladies and gentlemen, Zach Glantz and Clint Randall. 
Hello. Hey, Blot. Hey, guys. What's up? What's up? Uh, can you hear us okay? I can hear you great. I can hear you great. You look good. You sound good. Um, Thank you. We're excited our, to be here. I'm so excited to have you guys. Our question of the week, if you weren't working in your cubicle, Clint and Zach, if you weren't, you know, tending to sick animals and performing surgery, what do you think you guys might have done with your lives? I think for me, I would just take my current life and flip it. I would make my day job my hobby and my hobby my job. So I would mm. do I would do maybe Broadway minus the booze for my job. And then I would, would moonlight uh, as a real estate expert and urban planner. <laughs> I think there's I think there's a market for that, right? I think as a hobbyist. As a hobbyist. Yeah, like as a hobbyist, like freelance, you know. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, just, just to be clear, and we'll ask Josh and Gray later, but I don't think anybody does Broadway without the booze. Sure. Yeah. You do, you do the booze after, I think is my understanding. Yeah. Like you go to yeah. the theater, do the show, and then you do the booze. Whereas, as you know, at Boozy Broadway, we, we do the boozing part first. Yeah. That's right. First, during, and after. <laughs> during. <laughs> okay. Important. And yeah. uh, and and Dr. Zach, what would what would you be doing with your life if you weren't uh, removing uh, spleens from cats? <laughs> um, I think I, I'm going to steal. My my grandmother was a uh, like eighth grade math teacher for a long time, and whenever she would get very frustrated with her students, she would turn and point at a like point, portrait she'd had of her in coveralls holding a plunger, and it said, "I should have been a plumber." And I sort of like that mentality of like, like the polar opposite because like yeah, you literally are being paid to deal with people's shit. You know? So so no matter what you do, you would want to be dealing with feces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, sure. he's the Luigi to my Mario. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's, good. <laughs> That's great. All right, you guys. Uh, so can you introduce what you have for us? Yeah, so we brought along a clip from our most recent Boozy Broadway. Usually we perform live at the Black Box Theater here in Philadelphia, but we've done a couple shows online now during the quarantine, and we've been encouraging everyone in the cast to get creative with what they can do from home without assistance. And so Zach and I thought it would be fun to do a duet this time rather than each do a solo number. So we found uh, a great uh duet for two men from city of angels and we filmed it ourselves in really let's call it like 40 minutes 40 minutes because <laughs> oh, we had to go pick including, our, including showering and <laughs> yeah because we had to pick our son up from daycare and time was limited and this is what uh, we're working with now so um this is that song and i hope it's indicative of of what you would experience at a boozy broadway show give them a, online like a, or a plot at all oh sure just real fast sorry adam uh, if people don't know City of Angels, the idea behind the song is a writer of sort of detective stories is having an, an inner monologue battle with one of his characters. So he's he's yelling at himself, who is a detective in one of his stories, if that makes any sense. All right. It is utterly charming. Let's check it out. Are some gumshoe you just don't think well get this dumb gumshoe you come from my inkwell is your mouth lonely with one foot in there stone your brain only holds thoughts I put in there just what you are I'll spell out you are a novel pain one speck of lint that fell out the last time that I picked my brain are so jealous of my track record. Tolstoy, do tell us your feeble hack record. Your weak knees brand you soft and unstable. One small threat and you fold like a card table. You drool at my adventures. Your broads in bed are bored. Go home and soak your dentures. Your pen is no match for my sword. You're nothing without me. A no one who'd go undefined. You wouldn't exist. You 
never be missed. I tell you, you're out of my mind. A show off, a blow hard. Your equal parts hot air and go. And no one would doubt me without me. You're nothing at all. You're in my plot. I'm still your creator. I call each shot. I'm your private dictator. You are so thick. You eat, breathe, sleep fiction. I'm your meal ticket, knee deep in cheap fiction. You gloating ignoramus. You haven't any shame. Hey, I'm the famous Seamus. And most people don't know your name. Oh, man. <laughs> You're nothing without me. Without me, you just disappear right into thin air. And no one would care or notice you ever were here. A puppet and a star. A loser who's destined to fall. I'm everything you always wanted to be. Let's deal with the issue you wish you were me. You're nothing without me, without me. You're nothing. You guys, it's too much. It's so good. It it's so fun. charming. It's so it cute. Fun. And it's just such and a delight. Our, and our cat was in the beginning. And your cat is yeah. in it. And all of Dexter's toys. And it's <laughs> it is just yeah. fantastic. I, I highly encourage cleaning up. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I highly encourage everybody that's watching, really, truly do follow Boozy Broadway on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, it, we have a lot of fun. It's it's free to watch and it's interactive and it's so fun that it's now made it to the internet. And our next one, June 19th? Yes, yes. Let's put in a plug for that. So June 19th is actually two years to the day that we did our very first Boozy Broadway. So June 19th of 2020, which is Friday, is going to be our third online show. I think our 14th or 15th show in general. So uh, yeah, mark your calendars, follow us on our social media channels so you can stay tuned for updates and we would love to have you. Yes. All right. Everybody, please join us for Boozy Broadway. We have lots of fun performances, these fun pre-recorded stuff. We have a lot of other incredibly talented folks who contribute material to Boozy Broadway. And we're always looking for guests and, and uh, people to uh, perform and to uh, be contestants. And uh, I hope you join us. I've already recruited uh, your the guests who are upcoming in your program. So <laughs> amazing. I'll let, I'll let you them, but, uh, amazing. Yeah. And don't tell me that Matt has already sold them a stroller too. Might have happened. <laughs> we can sell you a stroller. <laughs> yeah. And they were on the tick with Val. I don't know. I don't know. All right, you guys. That was awesome. Stick around. We'll wave goodbye to Clinton Zach at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Zach Glad to Clint Randall. All right, you guys, we are blowing up in the comments. Let's check in on the comments. I'm going to go all the way back here. Okay. Let's see on my personal page. We have Jenny Pinsari, my wife, is saying yes to this bio, Clint and Zach. Um, we have uh, Matt Kelsey. So Zach and Clint, yay. Um, Humox 27 says hunks. All right, we have Jania Washington is ready for Valerie Curry. She's ready. She's where we, I don't know. Are you ready? Are you ready? Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Matt Kelsey uh, mentioned when when Clint said he should be a city planner as his hobby, he suggested maybe he's a moonlight planner. Um, all right. Love Clint's shirt. Shout out to Philly. Clint, what's on your shirt? Oh, um, it's it's the Philly skyline, and um, it's a Philly Beer Week shirt from 2010. Love it, fantastic! Yeah. All right, um, Matthew Tobin has cat spleen fever. Uh, Headers PBJ is back now. I'm so glad you're back. 
Um, okay. What else do we have here? Brian Del Toro says, this is grade A phone camera choreography. It definitely is. The fact they did that in one continuous shot took incredible planning to do it. And Lindsay says, bravo. Agreed. Uh, all right. Great. Lola says, bravo to the maximo. That is the highest of the bravos. Uh, Robert Glantz says, Father's Day show. I'm not sure what he's referring to. Zach? The Boozy Broadway show. The Boozy Broadway, it's oh. Father's Day weekend. Oh, Boozy Broadway is a Father's Day show. That's right. It's also my mom's birthday. If you and, there, but yeah. Amazing. It's a family show. It's a family show. Yeah. Um, all right. It's time for our next guest. It is time for our next guest. And uh, who was it? There was um, Jania. It's time. It's time, baby. Get better, get excited. She's a stage and screen actor and producer, originally from Los Angeles, currently living in Woodstock, New York. Credits include Amazon's The Tick, Fox's The Following, Showtime's House of Lies, and films such as American Pastoral and Blair Witch. She does everything. She acts, she sings, she does everything. And on top of it, she's a wonderful person and a great spirit. And I'm so glad that she's here. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Valerie Curry. Thank you for that warm welcome. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you're joining us. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy that Jenea is ready for me. Yeah, she's ready. Yeah. She's okay. so ready. Um, I'm not ready, but I'm glad somebody's ready. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you are ready because you it's your performance is pre-recorded. It's pre-recorded because so, I'm not a fool, nor am I a Broadway <laughs> performer. <laughs> but I am so glad you, but it, it is so lovely. And I'm so glad you pre-recorded because we get to see your beautiful garden. Yeah. And we get to see your lovely husband. My beautiful husband also, really. I know that's part of it. I'm trying to distract from my voice by just having a handsome man beside me. He's always, wait, wrong direction. He's always right. there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't ready, he wasn't ready, he wasn't ready. Wasn't ready. <laughs> hi Sam, you don't have to be on camera, but I'm saying hi. Um, great. Well, um, Fari, you you are a, a an actress on uh, stage and screen. What do you think you'd be doing with your life if you weren't uh, in the arts? I guess it can be art, artistic related. Well, I think it's definitely creative. Um, my ideal career would uh, basically be to make wine in Northern California. I want to live in the movie Bottle Shock. Yeah. So I want to make wine in California in the seventies. Yeah. With Chris Pine. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> Take me with you. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I uh -huh. can't do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Great. Yes. <laughs> That's the dream. I, my sister has been talking for years. She, that, that's what, I mean, not in the 70s. It's fine, or your sister's been talking about? Uh, <laughs> no, no, about about wanting to uh, start a winery in Northern California. I grew up going to summer camp in Northern California, so my heart is up there. I love and it. I, so I just love it. Where did you go it. to camp? I uh, went to Jewish summer camp at Camp Swig and Camp Newman. Oh, where in California? I didn't, I, they sent me to the Methodist camp, so. Um. Yeah, I did I didn't think you would know the names of them. I just <laughs> figured maybe just you asked. It was uh, it was in Saratoga and then Santa Rosa. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, just gorgeous. So, um, what do you have prepared for us? Um, so I have a song um, that is. I'm bringing you some some Pixar material tonight, um, but I love yes. it from a folk singer that I love, Julie Fowlis. Um, and uh, it just, it gave me strong quarantine vibes about wanting to, wanting to be free again and to have space. And I feel very lucky to have that now. So you see me uh, singing that um, with my husband, Sam, accompanying me in our garden. All right, here we go. Love, it is a distant star guiding us home wherever we are. This love, it is a burning sun shining a light on the things that we've done. I try to speak to you every day, but each word. to be 
Wow. That was gorgeous. That was absolutely gorgeous. And you know what? When I first saw the video, I said, oh, the, the vocals were so impeccable. I said, oh, this was pre-recorded audio that they, and they lip sync and perform. But then I heard the birds and the wind. No, those were the ones we actually added in post. Are you serious? <laughs> oh. The birds were perfect, though. That was our Bernie moment. Right. It was... Listen, you don't you don't need to, I feel like we were in a 70s uh uh vineyard. The 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 light kind of gave us that nice 70s Instagram filter. Ah, it was beautiful. It. it was just beautiful. Um it's and and I I want to go back to 70s too. I feel like my hair it keeps getting longer. You're there. And I keep joking. I'm like I I like I keep putting it out as a joke, but I'm very serious. I'm like, I really want to have like the look of those, like a like the a Loggins and Messina album cover, you know, like, like those awesome, like you bread. I love got, those like, dudes. Kind of like Liberace thing. <laughs> yes, yes, it's Liberace means Kenny Loggins. That is my that's my <laughs> aesthetic. Only you can make that work. Make yes, that happen. I get that all the time. Liberace means Kenny Loggins. Well, thank you, Val, for, for singing. It was just gorgeous. And oh, we'll, we'll wave goodbye to Val at the end. And um, and maybe she'll put Sam on unwillingly also at the end. Very He's popular, pissed. apparently. <laughs> He's very shy. He's very shy. <laughs> All right, you guys. We'll we'll see you. We'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you, Val. Right. Thank Valerie you Curry, much. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's check in on the comments. Um all right, what do we got? Uh, Jenny Pinzari says, gorgeous song, woman, and scenery, the trifecta. It's true. It's true. <laughs> about the comments about Loggins Beach Liberace, she says, I'm a lucky lady. Hashtag, that's my Liberace Loggins. It's probably going to start trending on Twitter now. Hashtag, that's my Liberace Loggins. Um, all right, what do we got in the comments here? Sounding off. Okay. All right. These are all out of context now. Okay. Phil Ludwigson says, can you have a dick reunion on here? Get everyone back. You guys, we've got almost everybody. <laughs> well, not quite. Not quite. Um, let's see. Uh, Matt Kelsey's having flashbacks to eating from the pepper trees at Malibu Winery. Yes, sir. That was a great time. Great time. Uh, Matthew Tillman says, that was valid. Or my comment was valid. Lindsay says, hashtag Liber Loggins. I like that one. I like that one. Um, oh, I still have Val's uh, banner up as if I'm Valerie Curry. I'm not. I'm hashtag Liber Loggins. Um, all right. Uh, and in the private chat among the uh, show guests, they're all talking about Sam Underwood's jawline. All right. It's time for our last guests of the evening, our final guests. And then I got a song for you. This is so exciting. Uh, one of these gentlemen, we, we have two guys. They're roommates and buddies. One of them, uh, Josh Daniel was in the Book of Mormon. First national tour, second national tour. And on Broadway, maybe you would have heard of it. It's a street in New York. No big deal. Pre-pandemic, Josh was the understudy for Seymour in Little Shop of Horrors off Broadway. Hopefully it'll be coming back. You should check it out. Uh, the other guy that's joining us, he played Elder McKinley. Gray Henson played Elder McKinley in the Book of Mormon. First national tour. And on, as I mentioned, that street. It's one over from 7th Avenue. It's Broadway. Uh, and he was nominated for a Tony for his portrayal of Damien Hubbard in Mean Girls on Broadway. So how exciting is it that we have a Tony nominee who's also a sweet guy to boot? We've got Josh Daniel and Gray Henson. Yeah! <laughs> and they are literally waving their flag. Man, a fun fact, Adam Warner, is that this is the same flag that I used in Country Gay. Oh my. I am starstruck right now, Josh. I'm not, I'm not even as excited to see you guys as I am to see that flag, the very flag that was in the video. Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe that? That is exciting. Oh, my goodness. So sorry we weren't in the tick. We were not in the tick, unfortunately. Yeah. So I don't know, you guys. I don't, what were you doing? 
wait, wait, I, the, the speeder wait, stuff. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. That was it. Well. All right. Um, you guys, uh, here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, you know what? Let me say something first that had happened in our tech rehearsal. Can I mention this? Great. Oh, sure. Yeah. You got your private mom. chat. So mom. I when when I met, I, I knew Josh. When I met Gray, I said, Gray, I have to ask you a question. I saw a, a comedy special, uh, an Australian uh, comedian named uh, Joel Creasy. He does this whole bit about a fling that he had stalking a cast member of Book of Mormon. And I really thought, <laughs> You yeah, said it was it the third be. lead of the book. The of third Mormon. lead, and and right, and and you played Elder McKinley, and I said, well, that's probably the third lead in Book of Mormon. I would say the fourth, but yeah. Oh well, you're being modest, Gray. You're being Very modest. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, it wasn't him. He had never heard this, but I encourage everybody to go. It's a good special, isn't it? He's really funny. Yeah. He's very funny. Joel Creasy on Netflix. Unfortunately, Gray couldn't learn firsthand that he was funny because he was not said thirdly that he went home with. <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. That's right. It wasn't him, but I just, I'm setting it for the record for anybody who watched this special. It wasn't <laughs> Gray. Um, you guys, our, our question of the week um, if you were doing other things in your career besides starring on Broadway, um, what would you be doing? What would you want to do? Me? Um, okay, well, I've always said, I've always said this is my retirement plan, but it's kind of what I think I could do in real life is mm. own some sort of tchotchke shop on the coast <laughs> or maybe, maybe possibly in Val's country home because that's exactly where I'd want to do it. But oh, like, tchotchke shop in her home. I didn't tell him I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah, Gray was like, I, I was like, oh, what's your answer? He's like, I'm not going to tell you. Aesthetics <laughs> and like tiny little, like I would want to curate a little shop of like soaps and lotions and like vintage <laughs> antiques. Like that's, that's my level of homosexuality. I'm laughing because this is so amazingly like directly in the center of who Gray Henson is. So <laughs> yeah. And you guys have been in quarantine together yeah. for uh, like two and a half months. So. Yeah, you certainly would know. Okay, that, that's okay. amazing. Great. What would you call your tchotchke shop? Oh, well, I've always uh, there was I was you know the idea of using my name as the pun like uh, gray skies are gonna clear up or like gray dog or like um uh, or how about black and white? No, I don't know. It, you you got to work it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. All right. Josh, what do you think it should be called? Put it in the comments. Okay, oh. you're you're right. All right, guess. Let us know in the comments what Gray's, what Gray's Tchotchke shop. I'm gonna wait because our, our our show comments are coming in with some really great content for for names. But I'll, I'll wait to add those to the final. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, and Josh, Josh, what what would you do? Would you so also I open a Tchotchke shop? Would you be no. the Would you be the 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 night manager? <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, um, I, I don't know. Like, I was thinking mine isn't as cute or funny, but like, I, I do some political work anyway. So I feel as though I would be involved in some sort of political venture, despite the fact that I, there's way too many, too much incriminating uh, content of me out there. <laughs> but uh, the, that, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I would do something in, in, a, in a place or a uh, way that I could help other people. You do not need to be ashamed of that, Josh. That is far more virtuous than a tchotchke shop. Yeah. Yes. Listen, to, listen to this asshole. <laughs> and, and Josh, do you have a a pun on your name that you would call your uh, activism organization? Oh, oh, my god. Um, oh my god! Just like Josh is so generic. You know? <laughs> it's like I don't know what you do with that. It could be the the two first names initiative. Yeah, exactly. Or like, or like the smiles worthwhile. Love it. Gosh, Nobody Daniel. knows. So his name on Instagram is Captain Smiles, I, and and notably in the video that of, of Country Gay. Yeah, um, I don't think that's something that I said in in that that night, and that I still maintain. I should put it on my, my website, which was a megawatt smile. Yes. And please don't go say it, Josh Daniel. And I was like, that's what I'm going to put on my site. Megawatt uh, smile for sure. Um. All right. Um. I'm, I'm checking in. On the comments here to see if we have suggestions. Let's see. Um, I'm still stuck at Liber Logins. Okay, here oh, we yeah. go. 
Little Shop of Tchotchkes. Ooh, I wasn't in that show, but I do love it and appreciate it. I was, and I would support that. That's good. Okay, we have... Uh, here's... <laughs> Here's a welcome to Valerie Curry's home. This is the gift shop. <laughs> what do you think, Val? What do you think, Val? I'm literally feeding a baby mouse right now. What? A baby mouse? Okay, hold on. Stop the show. Wait, wait. Show. Is, that, is, that a, is that a Boda box? Oh, no, it's just a cardboard box. Wow, wow Val, this is next level. I know. <laughs> They've lost. The, somebody send help to Woodstock, New York. <laughs> Sam has what? one too. <laughs> my, my from lockdown has jumped the shark. I think. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize it was like this is far. Like I sang a Disney princess song and now I'm feeding mice. And <laughs> 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 and Sam is there with and Minnie. Oh God. Oh, who I am, I oh my god, they've lost their minds. Okay, let's meet the mouse. Amazing. What is that name? They're Mickey and Minnie. <laughs> oh, oh. We have my. to feed them with little modeling paintbrushes dipped in kitten milk. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, that I would think so that maybe you're feeding them with dreams and magic. I don't know if I'm hallucinating or I not. Know. <laughs> <laughs> my hair in the morning. All right. And this is I have heard in 2020. I, I would not believe. <laughs> I'm just gonna do my hair, and they're giving me my quarantine cut. Oh, that's right. That's we right. gave you gonna... quarantine cuts. Oh, oh my god, god. this is too much. Okay. All right, Val. Feed those mice. Okay. We'll check back in. Wow, guys. Wow. Um. All right, let's check. We have some good puns here. Here we go. Great. G getting back to topic here. I don't know how to transition out of that. Uh, we'll, we'll just keep moving. Uh, Grey's Anatomy. Oh, very good. Oh, 50 Grey's shades Papaya. Up. Oh, I love that. Grey's That's Papaya funny. is very good, Matt Tobin. Okay. Grey's Poopo. Grey's, <laughs> Grey's Poupon. 50 Shades of Grey. 50 Gifts of Grey. 50 Gifts of Grey. Really good. Uh huh. 50 um, gray? Right now, Grey Poupon is my fave. <laughs> gray, gray the, the Grey's Menagerie. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Uh, wait, no, wait. That was it. And that was... Was that the person who was sad that they weren't being heard no, earlier? No, that was someone else. No, okay. They, Hold they, on. And and Josh, if you're the night manager, it could be Grey's jo Josh... 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. This okay. is... The, I don't think we should sing anymore. Let's the Graveyard say. Shift... Graveyard shift. Matt Tobin's coming in. Matt Tobin is coming in hot with the good um, Okay. All wow. right. All right, you guys. It's you know what? It's time, it's time for a song. We we let's take out the brass tacks. <laughs> we let's let's get serious now. Yeah. Let's okay. get happy. See what I did there? <gasps> oh my Transition. oh right, we should talk about what we're singing, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. singing, yeah. Uh, okay, great. One of the gayest duets of all time, but in a male key. In a male key. Because we're gay. And Josh said if, if we were on the Orpheum, if we were on the Orpheum circuit, this would be our go-to. This is our this is our hit. <laughs> yeah. Oh my okay. lyrics. Hold on, let me get there. Okay. All and right. I'm, so I'm playing. So we're quarantined and playing for my or our Apple TV. <laughs> Joshdaniel.com. Uh, that way. All right, play. At Granson. Ready? <clears throat> Forget your troubles. Come on, get happy here again. So your Shout hallelujah. So let's sing a song and just get happy here again. Get happy days for our judgment the sun is shining together. Come on, get happy. Shouting out. The Lord is waiting no to take your life. Shout hallelujah. So let's tell the world. And just get happy. We're happy days are promised. Uh, we're heading. Cross the river. Soon our cares will all be gone. There'll be no more. From now on, from now on, forget your troubles and 
and just get happy. You better change the stars above. Shout hallelujah. So let's sing a song. And just get happy cheer again. Happy times. Happy times. Happy nights. Happy nights. Happy days. I hear <laughs> what did i say megawatt smile there it is look at that smile you guys what a delight i started I, halfway through i thought oh my god what about their neighbors and then i thought what a gift it would be to be your neighbors yeah i would love to hear that coming through those glazed exposed brick walls you're welcome um yeah, that was just delightful, you guys. That 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 was such a joy. And you're going to be performing that somewhere else, too. Yeah, we're doing it for a Pride uh, event that's coming up upstate New York somewhere? Yeah. In Rockland County. We're yeah. just spreading the gay around. Because okay. if, if, if the Pride Parade is canceled, canceled? <laughs> if the Pride Parade is canceled, the Pride can't be canceled. Right. That's right. right. The Pride will go on. You guys, what a joy. I, I just want to keep you on here because there's a few more puns. Oh, um, I think we, we have a like, one that just one that just came up is Gray Pride. Oh, uh, very on brand. Very on brand. Um, but I somebody alerted me too that in our private chat among the guests here, we have a few here. Uh, we have yeah. Gray parentheses home and gardens. Oh, so uh, yeah, I, I died for that uh, one. That's pretty good. We have April showers gray bring is. gray flowers. And gray is an old woman, so gray's home and gardens is is really, really good. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, what about like grainbow? Mm. Let, let, let the commenters pick. We'll, we'll, we'll let... uh, gray, gray for the riffraff. Uh, um, and we had some other comments here. Yes, key change. Yes, key change. Thank you, Who Mox Twenty Twenty. Thanks, Who Mox Twenty Twenty. Yes, uh, tear in my eye. So effing good. I'm censoring this. Oh, uh, sorry. I for just the kids. Said the word. For the kids. Oh, with their kids. I'm sorry. I. I uh, if you all right, these are spinning out of control now. Eddie Eddie no, that's actually Grace drag name. Yeah, I need mean, Matthew. <laughs> that's, that's good. good. <laughs> that's good. That's uh, good. Gray, gray day. Gray day. Gray day. Gray day. Good, Guys, mate. these are these are these are getting out of control now. Um, Josh Daniel and Gray Henson, what a joy it is to have you guys on here. Stick Love around; we'll, we'll, we'll wave goodbye. Um, all right, you know what? It's going to happen right now. We're going a few minutes over. We're going to wrap the show soon. I'm going to do a song because it's my show, and uh, and and then we're going to and then we're going to check in on um, Val's mice, and uh, and and then we're going to say goodbye. So. Uh, my song here, let me pull this up. My song, uh, so I had an idea uh, last year. I thought it would be really cool for there to be a, a, a kid's band. It's like, there's a lot of genres of kid's bands coming out right now. There's like the Okie Dokie Brothers, kind of like, you know, indie folk rock and all these different ones. I thought it'd be cool for there to be an 80s hair band for kids. Um, so I, I wrote my own, I, I, I came up with this idea uh, with some input from my good friend, Jonathan Schmidt Chapman. And um, I wrote some songs in, in the vein of some, uh, some 80s jams. And I, I thought it'd be fun to have them be kind of spinoffs of, of well-known uh, hairband 80s jams. So this one, you might uh, recognize the vibe of it, but it's an original song. It's called Use Your Words. It's for kids. Maybe somebody took your toy and it makes you feel so mad. And they won't even give it back and it makes you feel so sad. Maybe you feel like you really wanna push and shove them too. But before
before you decide to hit somebody, here's what you should do. Use your words, you don't have to fight. Use your words to make things right. If you're feeling hurt, then make your feelings hurt. Use your words. Maybe a friend was playing a game and they were horsing around. And they didn't see you standing there and accidentally knocked you down. It's for the kids. Maybe you feel like you want to cry and push your friend down too. Before you decide to push somebody, here's what you should do. Use your words, you don't have to fight. Use your words to make things right. If you're feeling hurt, then make your feelings hurt. Use your words. What would you do if someone was teasing you? What would you say? I feel this way. Use your words, you don't have to fight. Use your words to make things right. If you're feeling hurt, then make your feelings hurt. Use your words, you don't have to cry. Use your words to make things right. If you're feeling hurt, then make your feelings hurt. Use your words. Thank you very much. It's called Use Your Words. Uh, for my 80s uh, kids hair band called Quiet Coyote. It's coming to a stage near you soon. As soon as stages are back, Quiet Coyote will be back. I'm going to check in. On the comments here. Um, all right. Okay. We still have more puns coming in and they're just okay. They're just, they're just okay. Uh, they're just okay. All right, my friends. First, what I want to do is check in on the mice. Val, how are the mice? The mice are good. They've just had their dinner. Um, I was laughing so hard because we haven't slept in a couple nights because we have to wake up every two hours to feed them. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> um, but they're good. And Sam helped them poop, which is a thing you also have to do every time you feed them. Thanks, Al. <laughs> <laughs> That's, um, you know what? So so when, when Jenny gives birth, you will know, you'll be able to give me advice. Right. <laughs> on what it's like. This is, twins. This is a completely different experience <laughs> twins twins that's right <laughs> that's right all right let's bring in everybody we have matt garing we have uh, uh, unmute yourself matt we have zach of Clint. course we, he doesn't know how and we I have uh, screaming Josh and about Clay. the mice <laughs> screaming about the mice <laughs> oh you guys now i empathize because gray also has to feed me every two hours uh. <laughs> And help him poop. To be and fair, I do it for him anyway, so I'm not, you know. And help him poop. All right, you guys. Well, let's give a big round of applause to Valerie Curry, Matt Gehring, Josh Daniel, Gray Hansen, Zach Lance, and Clint Randall. Follow everybody on the internet. They do amazing things. What a joy it's to have them here. Thank you, everybody. And tune in next week. We have uh, some exciting guests. Hold on. Let me see who do we have. Wait a second. Well, give it up for Adam Block. We have uh, uh, Jason. Adam. Oh, thank you guys. Oh, no, thank you. We have um, uh, Jason Messina and Zach Garner and Jessica Ritaco are going to be here with a hilarious video. We have Angela Sclafani, singer songwriter, who's going to have a song for us and more guests to be announced. Thank you guys for being here. Everybody have a wonderful night. Join us next Thursday at nine o'clock. Good night, everybody. Bye.